I coached 10 players from every rank, platinum through SSL. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing the top 10 best moments from the over three hours of coaching. That way you can just steal these strategies and use them to win in your ranked games. If you're new here, I'm Luke. I've got almost 4,000 hours in the game and I'm a peak grand champ three myself. But more importantly, I've been running Rocket League's largest coaching company called thegrandchampbootcamp.com for the last three and a half years. Inside the GCB, we help 18 plus players ranked platinum through champ get up to grand champ and beyond using coaching. In fact, the people you see in this video are all real students who've been coached by me and my team. I'm actually in our Discord server five days a week, running games and doing group coaching events like these. So if you wanna join in, drop into our Discord and send us a DM with the keyword coach to apply to join, 18 plus only. And now into the coaching. Mistake number one is not taking the ball to open space and more specifically, not taking the ball back. Let me show you what I mean. Sometimes you'll be on offense here. You'll have finished a play in the opposing corner and the ball will be rolling back out to midfield. Now the mistake a lot of low rank players make is the ball will be rolling out here. They'll be low boost and they'll try to turn this ball back in and shoot it again. The problem is this movement here, if the opponent is back post, is pretty easy to stop. Instead, what we wanna do is take the ball back to open space, reset, and then start our attack again. Looks something like this. That's just one example of how you can do it, but let me show you in game what this looks like. So this is a situation where, where Curtis would say, the goal is here, and so you think I have to shoot this ball. But what you don't look at is this. This is why ones is so hard. You can't just go, 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 because you will run out of boost. You have to control ball back sometimes. So either we control ball here, or like Curtis said, when you're in this position, taking the ball this way makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because that will oh. uh, bait opponent away from the net and also create a better opportunity instead of forcing something because, first of all, we cannot approach it wide enough to generate powerful shot, so we're gonna play like this and lighten a challenge. Second of all, no boost to recover. After you get this outplay touch and, you know, unfortunately we land here, this is immediately take ball back, take ball back. All right. And as a bonus, if you want a way to practice this, go into one of my favorite training packs called One Shot F8 by Kevpert. We can imagine instead of going at the net, we take the ball to open space and restart our attack on the opponent's net. And it's a great way to practice taking the ball out and then coming back at your opponent's net. Give that a shot. Mistake number two is rotating onto the same side as the ball or rotating right under the ball when your teammate already has it on defense. Check out this example to see how this can go wrong. You know what is wrong with this rotation. I'll let it. Like the positioning, it puts me more so out of position yes. just in case if he gets like a bad 50. That's exactly it. What's the job of the second man here? Cover the worst possible option, coverage. This puts us under the ball, the 50 happens. And now when we turn ball cam on, look at our vision. This is so yeah. hard to read, right? As a defender. And you have no clue when blue's challenging. This entire play is super easy if we just stay wide the whole time. You're rotating through the play like this. I would propose rotating like this. And as this play goes on, as you rotate there, 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 you're rotating along the middle right now. Once you see where the ball's going, you have an option to take to the back post, or I mean, if the ball is there and you can take it for free, take to the front post. We're rotating along here. And when this 50 happens, guys, everybody watching, Vesmez is here. When the 50 goes this way, Vesmez is rotating, rotating here. Now Vesmez is sitting right here, jumping for this same ball. And notice, key difference, if Vesmez is jumping from right here right now, he sees the blue challenger the entire time. Versus if we go watch that play back, Vesmez, you saw that blue challenger for none of the time. You just had to assume he was going and guess. Mistake number three is giving too much space in 1v1s. I get that you wanna be back, but if you go too far back, this sort of stuff will happen. Now that we turn back, most times we wanna turn in here. We wanna get closer to the play because right now the issue is there's a lot of space behind your car. And if he 
takes the ball this way, you can't really stop. But for some reason, Nukem, we hit the gas here. Why are we driving away? I got scared. Yeah, you got scared. So you're just like, let's reset. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And I was like, I'll shadow defend. And that did not work out. No, it's not going to work out because you gave him so much face. Okay. Like in this situation, the reason I wanted you to turn in right here, I want you to turn in aggressively is because this ball is really awkward. So you can get yep. closer without him. Even if he hits it over your head, you're still recovering in time. So if we close yep. this gap right here, you actually have a chance to, when he starts turning down, you actually just take this ball off him and score. But right here, I just basically said, here's the goal. Yeah, you just quit. Yeah. We just want to be at this distance the entire time. Like this, yep. this distance is good, but we just needed to start up there. One thing I might say, look at his boost, and if he boosts, you boost. If he doesn't boost, you don't boost. Can he flip? Can he not flip? It's just his boost shows intent of like, now I'm really committing for the play I would try to do. Mistake number four is creeping up and joining chaos. Sometimes in low rank twos or threes, there will be chaos on the ball. If you're last man back in these situations, you need to make sure that you stay back in case something crazy happens. Watch this clip to see why. At phase value, there's one, two, three blue guys and at least one overcommitted orange guy here. So I want us playing very cautious as last man back. We drive pretty close to this ball and there's so much chaos here that if this beat happens, now we're turning back. You're the only one that can be ready for this. And clearly, you know, it puts you in an awkward spot. This whole awkward situation where you could have been scored on there, it's prevented if we're just three to five car lengths or five to 10 car lengths further back. So we just stop right here. We're stopping here instead of continuing to drive forward. Too close with too little information. We just don't have enough confidence here to know that our teammate's gonna win this challenge. Mistake number five is committing in the opponent's corner. And for this tip, I actually wanna show you a good example. This GC2 I was coaching named Nem did a good job by not committing in the opponent's corner. Watch what he does. I like us pressuring here and not flipping into it. So one of the big differences between champ and grand champ is when you start to get to grand champ, most times there's gonna be two opponents back. And so what Nem does really well here is Nem single jumps and he's not driving fast in the ball. He's not trying to throw his car into the corner. As first man, if you're Nem, you're not trying to commit because you want what happened to just happen, where all of a sudden you take the ball off the opponents, but look, you're still safe. You still have a double layer of defense. You don't want to give up your double layer because when that happens, that's where most goals are converted shortly after. Mistake number six is sitting underneath your opponent's net. For this tip, I want to show another good example. The first SSL in our coaching boot camp named Faith does an excellent job of positioning on offense. Pay attention to what he does here. So one thing I want to highlight that Faith is doing really well here is some people would be watching this and they'd be like, you know, why aren't you sitting right under the, you know, the, the ball's moving so slow. Most, most diamonds and champs would be sitting like literally on this pad. And the reason it's wrong to be on this pad or or the reason I don't personally do it, you can do it in your rank games if you want, but when I'm solo queuing like Faith is here, he moves back. The point is he moves back. And this is really good because when the ball does go up, if Faith is sitting on this boost, he's using 100 boost just to catch the ball out of the air. Versus because he's back now, he can fly up at this ball, his perfect vision of the opponents, he sees the backboard is open and he's gonna hit a perfect backboard double tap. Now it gets intercepted, but it was the right idea. It's easy to watch Faith here and be like, oh, I would have done that. But what most champs do, I'm telling you, is they'll just keep driving and they'll sit under the ball because it looks so good to just be right under that ball the entire time until this 50-50 happens and then you're not ready for it. But because Faith moves back and then reattacks the play. It looks nice. Mistake number seven is rotating on the ball side into your own corner. Situation here is let's say you're rotating back and you're on orange team defense. If the ball's going into your corner, it can be tempting here to want to follow it and play close. The problem is when we follow the ball into our corner, all of a sudden we're shooting here on our own net. Instead, when the ball goes into your corner and you see it rolling there on defense, we want to get around the ball as orange. That way, when a shot comes on net, we're ready here to clear it. Let me show you an example here of how this can go wrong if you don't do it the right way. But after this, this is a mistake that you can learn from. So we drive here. We look for a demo. I like that idea. Once this happens, the ball's in our corner. You have a decision right now. And you make a decision that I, I don't like. Looking back, what do you think you could have done differently? Well, I'm never going to catch him by chasing him to try to still demo him. So I should have gone to the left and circled around. Love that. Yeah, you should go to the left and circle around. Even if you can make a demo, it's not a very productive demo. Yeah, this is just putting our team in a very compromising position. Hello. 
right and then you're bumping teammates to rotate back that's unavoidable when you do kind of these ball side rotations mistake number eight is throwing the ball away or rushing the play this can happen on offense or defense when you don't realize and check how much space there is between the defender and you check out these two example clips i'd like to see you make one more touch before you go for this ground air so pop and put it on your car and then start ground air dribble later this is just kind of preemptive he's like insanely far back you see how far back he is so starting the air dribble from here with 60 boost is just a decision making mistake i was i was committing for the the, the demo but i just didn't right right I that was what that was yeah that was what i was going for it just didn't happen totally i see that you're going for the demo do you under do you agree that it would have been better to start the air dribble later yeah why why is it better to start it later because there are more boots and closer to the goal it's easier to shoot totally more oh, boozer to the goal be. closer to shoot harder to read less time for him more time for you option to just fake you don't have to commit so early the air dribble demo is 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 interesting but look how much space there is when you take to the air versus if you start this at the last second there's no way he gets above your demo quick tip whenever we're in the corner our vision is going to be limited one of the reasons low ranked players make bad decisions in the corners is because corners your vision looks like this you see you see your vision it's like zero right yeah i have no visual of the right and when we have low vision we have low information and when we have low information, we make bad decisions. We look dumb. And this is a prime example of that. Because you're going under the ball, you're like, oh, I don't know what's going on. I mean, you can't really see up the field. You really don't know what's going on right now. So you're like panicking. You're like, ah, oh, I got to boom it. And then he's like back in his corner and you just give the ball to him. And that whole decision is eliminated by not being under the ball. There's no threat here. Nobody's attacking us. Nobody's rushing this. We just turn back, get to our back wall, and then come around this ball from the front. We don't need to be under this ball trying to make a catch. Mistake number nine, flicking the ball away when there's two opponents back. Situation here is let's say you're in 2v2 and you're taking the ball out of your side of the field. The mistake is flicking the ball if you already see there's two opponents back. The reason is because when there's two opponents back and you flick the ball over the first, oftentimes, at the high ranks at least, you're just sending the ball to the second defender who will very quickly shoot it back or clear it on your side. Instead, in these situations, it can be very effective to drop the ball and low 50. That way you don't commit past the first defender. Take a look at one of our champ players here who did a good job of this in his game. The reason fake here is really good, by the way, guys, for everybody watching, flick here is actually a bad option. The reason is because even if you flick successfully, you probably boom it so far that the second guy comes and gets you. Most of the time, the better play is low 50, drop this down, and then the first guy commits and you're not committed because you don't have to flick. And then you're going to have a 2v1 immediately following. That plays really good. But when people are early challenging us and it's a 2v2, I really like non-committal options, so not flicking around the first guy is it's sometimes better. And last but not least, finally, mistake number 10, getting stuck under the ball. Situation here is, let's say a kickoff just happened, and the ball goes out to the right here, and it shoots up high into the sky. If you can't reach it, it can be tempting to drive under the ball, and last minute, try to jump up and hit it. The issue is, when the ball just finishes on kickoff, and it's up here, your camera is looking in the sky, meaning you can't see if there's an opponent upfield challenging you. Instead, when we find ourselves in these awkward situations where the ball is above us and we don't really know where, where to go, I always re recommend rotating out. That way you can get vision of the play. And then when it comes to you, you're ready for it. This is just such an awkward lost kickoff that I recommend you go back. Brendan is more likely to steal half boost than you because you have to play ball. You're last man back. Your teammate's completely out of the equation. He's first to this ball and his vision is so much better than yours when you're in these situations your camera's in the sky man you've got less boost than him you're stuck under the ball when you make a challenge from under the ball your information is so limited right because our vision is pointed directly at the sky we can't see when they're challenging it's going to be very hard to make a well-timed challenge he's got way better vision on this play than you do he should be beating you but his camera settings are so atrocious he won't after this ball goes up he should be going to wall and if you are under the ball he just smack it down and score on you like it. so most of the time when the ball's awkward lost to the side you just go back for corner boost that's the moral of the story and friendly reminder if you want to get your replay analyzed by me just like in this video our 18 plus discord community where i do all that coaching is accepting new members i'm in there two nights every single week doing replay analysis first come first serve for anybody that wants it join our free discord and send my team a dm with keyword coach to apply thanks for watching do we like me with a hat i feel like i kind of look goofy with that oh i kind of have kind of hair but oh, hell. Hell.